back with Triggered AF the podcast. Hey y'all. Hey. Hey Alicia. Hey y'all. Hey Hey. 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 Hey.
So yeah. I love the fact that you and your mother are best friends. Like yes. that's that's a beautiful thing to me. That's always been something that like I have aspired to have. It's not that easy. Oh, well, it's <laughs> not that easy. Like we we bicker like sisters. Like right. let's get that straight. It's complicated. It's complicated. People <laughs> look at me like, oh my god, you talk to your mother that way. Like, oh my god and I'm like let me put on speakerphone hold on <laughs> you know and they'd be like oh my god that's your mom I'm like yeah yeah that's my mom talking to me like that because it's like we're such in each other's ears so much yeah. we know our intention is mm-hmm. there we know what we mean so mm-hmm. we're just having a bad day or she's just like you know frustrated with something or vice versa she understands like okay you're having a moment I'm gonna let you have. I'm gonna let you have that. However, call me when you're done. Yeah, like, yeah. it's not even gonna be a point of arguing or getting upset yeah. or anything because I'm grown. Yeah, yeah. big grown. Yeah, big grown. So the dynamic is different. It's completely different. It's yeah. not like when I was a child where like I was, you know, getting like things slammed around the house, getting yelled at, like you know, having to be inside. I was punished. Like, no, like it's different now. I pay my bills plus. So, yeah, like, you know, so (laughs) it's a little little bit more like I finally get that little respect that I just never felt like I had growing up, which Mm -hmm. is so funny because I always like yearned for that type of respect as Mm -hmm. being looked at. Like I could take care of myself. I don't know why that hyper in Tennessee was into me (laughs) since 14. (laughs) I don't know (laughs) why, but I think it's just, it's it's the island raising you at an early age to go out, go and get a job at yeah. 13, 14, yeah. you know, and knowing that I could, t- I could do it. And it's like yeah. just having that approval, like that's over and done with. So now it's like, okay, we good. We here now. Yeah. So, no, that's awesome. Speaking about complicated, the title mm-hmm. of this episode is complicated complexions. Yes. Okay. And the reason why we titled that is because we want to have an extremely uncomfortable conversation around skin complexion, specifically within the black community, the African diaspora, right? Because a lot of times when people are thinking about the diaspora, you only think about people that are dark skinned, you only think about Africans, you only think about people who are obviously, you know, based based on their ethnic features and their makeup black, right? Um, And there's just so much more to it. And if you don't know, you don't know. Yeah, and if you know, you know. Yeah, yeah. And if you don't know, you just don't know. Yeah, and so many cultures and ethnicities were birthed from the African diaspora, right? Like that transatlantic trade was doing a lot. It was was a lot. lot. It was doing a whole lot. lot. It was doing the most. And sometimes we forget that there are so many of us that come from that space. Yeah. And... I feel like there's, there, it's almost intentional, the division. Absolutely. You know, like it, it feels very intentional. And we know yeah. from history that it is intentional. But the fact that it still feels so intentional yeah. after all these years and all these rights and movements and all the things that have happened, it's, it's just really shocking to me that yeah. there is still so much division. So we're going to talk a little bit around what it means uh, to be light-skinned and and, and and it seems like it's nothing, but it is a something. It's something. It's, it's something. something. Yeah, yeah, it's a something that you have to think about and deal with. Yeah. So I just wanted to kind of preface that because I know Absolutely. sometimes this is a conversation that can get super uncomfortable Absolutely. Um, for, for some. people, especially listening to it and feeling some type of way. Um, so say so. So we're gonna, yeah, so this is like a PSA. Okay, yeah. this is just like a this little... This is a warning. The this warning is a warning, warning. The warning label. So um, there's a lot of conflict just in general about what it means to be black. Right, yeah. especially nowadays. So, as a Latinx woman, how do you identify? I identify as being black, but also multicultural, only because of the mm-hmm. fact that if you do look at my, I guess you could say my ancestry, right? Okay. Mm-hmm. I am Asian and black descent, wow. but I am Dominican, if okay. that makes sense. Because just like in Jamaica, you can be any shade. Remember, I'm not. Um, I'm. I'm not in the. What's the comment? I'm not a race. I'm an ethnicity. So my race is multi because my ancestors are Asian and black descent, but I'm yeah. Dominican. So a lot of people don't really understand that you have multiple shades mm-hmm. that deter from that, especially from the, you know, Spanish and the French colonizers that separated Española that originated as Haiti and DR were pretty much yeah. siblings when it comes to that, or cousins or whatever you guys want to call it. Family. But family. family. We family. family at the end of the day. Family. Or family. It's a whole we, lot of fighting, but it's, it's family. It's family. It's family. So, it's functional as fuck. 
That's yeah, why it's really, like you relax. were looked at overall when you think about it in the Spanish culture, like Colombians and all these other, you know, islands or let me say continents or countries, right? Mm-hmm. They have a specific way of speaking, just like how in, mm-hmm. you know, French, they look at people who speak, who are Haitian, they speak Creole. It's yeah. a different type of French in their right. eyes. It's a different dialect. It's a different dialect. Just like how Dominicans, when we speak, it's a different dialect than mm-hmm. everybody else. Yeah. So immediately... We're already in the middle. Like, okay. We yeah. speak fluent mm-hmm. Spanish to somebody with a different dialect. They're looking at you like, what? Yeah. Oh, you dumb in a can. That's what it is. Oh, because my God. That's a real that thing. That that's a real say, thing. Dumb, dumb in, in a can? can? Yeah. I never like, heard Dominican, that. Dominican, but dumb in a can. I, re- I caught it the first time. I know I caught it, but is that a, I've never that's heard that thing. before. That's a real thing. That's wow. a real thing. Oh, my because gosh. Because what we speak is so broken down Spanish wow. that it's not proper. Oh, so that's how the French feel about Haitians because yeah, yeah. it's so Creole. broken down. But remember, we have the slave call. It's the same Spanish. We're saying that with Jamaicans and Pops, but we speak broken English because we were colonized yeah. by British. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh my British, but I never, I've never, i never heard dumb in a can. Oh my yeah, God. Because rude, our Spanish, rude. yeah, rude. very rude. So, like, you understand, it's like, okay, where can we be accepted? Because our mm. shades run. From zero to a hundred. Yeah. <laughs> like we have people yeah. even now that are European descent that had just been migrated there for years and years, and now they're technically Dominican too because they're born there. Yeah, but so, they are blind European blind. descent, right? Yeah. So just like my grandmother, right? Like my grandmother, like if you look at my mother, you look at my grandmother, you look like what? Like no, like stop. My mom reminds me of Kamora Lee Simmons. Oh, type of vibe looks yeah. very mixed, right? You don't know what she could be. My mother actually gets kind of annoyed, <laughs> literally, when people are like, "Oh my god, I thought you were Chinese," <laughs> and she's like, "No," <laughs> like you know, because she's like, "What do you want?" Me? <laughs> like, and she gets like that. And I'm like, "Mom, that's racist. You don't do that." She's like, "Well, it's racist that they actually think I'm Asian. like you know." And it's like, yeah. it's because she doesn't like to take away where she's born mm. and where she's from. Yeah. You know, yeah. So she, even though she knows that my grandfather's black and my grandmother's Asian, like mm-hmm. her last name is Ten with a hyphen, like T H hyphen E, and yeah. you know, like that ancestry goes so back that they're also born and raised in Dominican Republic, though. So you yeah. can't take that away from them. But having that multicultural background makes people look a little confused, and then they mm-hmm. also kind of have a little ignorant conversations after when they find out what you really could be because they're not willing to be open-minded and understanding yeah. you could be chinese jamaican you could be always, you yeah, could be you know tri- you could be all mm-hmm. types of things so for us to be now mind you again a lot of people don't know like taiwan used to own dominican republic oh, for many many years that. and they just stopped owning the ownership maybe back a few years ago 2016 17 yeah so we do have a lot of asian pretty much taking over just like how China mm-hmm. wants to own everything. It turned our island into a resort country. So we don't really have the understanding of what we are because we're really not who we are anymore. We have a lot of people coming in and, you know, taking over in the luxury yeah. lifestyle and they're switching things around. So yeah. people kinda have to understand we are multicultural. We have yeah. I have a cousin that had birthed three children all different shades. Yeah. Yeah, that yeah. happens. That definitely happens. That happens. It's anytime you have an African influence or like a black mm-hmm. influence, you're always going to be able to have a, a, a myriad of different possibilities. Yeah. Because even in, in the research was done, I think it was Oxford, they proved, I think and Harvard, they, they all proved that the first human originated on the continent of Africa. And so from that first human with that origination, mm-hmm. you have the gamut of everywhere. Yeah. Because everywhere, literally the first Homo sapien. Homo <laughs> sapien. <laughs> it's not the same thing. Because not everyone derives from Homo sapiens. Right. So I'm gonna throw that out there. That's do that with that what you will. Listen, that's those for fat. Take the info and if you want to take. Harvard it. proved that too, but not everybody. <laughs> Came from Homo sapiens. We're not going to go there, okay? That's we another podcast. Listen, <laughs> we so shoot this shit, night. but we do our research and we are highly intelligent. So, the <laughs> first Homo sapien originated, <laughs> got to say it right for Danny, um, on the continent of Africa, right? Mm-hmm. And so, within that Homo sapiens DNA, 
has literally the ability to create any and everything. Yeah. So that's how, like, I have, you know, black girlfriends who have children who are who look white. Bump a white passing. That child is white. <laughs> It's it's yeah. it's so fascinating to me though, like just how expansive like our DNA Crazy. is. Crazy. And being willing to be open to say, like, hey, there are so many possibilities instead of just assuming who this person is or where they come from. Yeah. Let me ask them their story. Yes. I know I catch myself all the time and making assumptions, and it's like you could assume or you could just ask. Yeah. Like there's a respectful way to, to ask anything. To ask, yeah. yeah. To ask and to have a conversation, and that's honestly what we're doing here, which is why I love Triggered so much, is because we have like some uncomfortable ass conversations with people who don't really want to ask the question. <laughs> I want to know. Listen, I want to know. I do. I want to know. <laughs> no, and so, like, for me, and again, because I'm used to asking those uncomfortable conversations, do you even believe in like light skin privilege? And then, if you do believe in it, do you think you've benefited from it in any way possible? And to preface that is because like. For, like, I remember the first time, because that conversation we had that made me want to do this mm-hmm. podcast with you was not the first time I heard you say that you identified as black. Yeah. And I remember the first time you said it, and I was like, skirt. Yeah, everybody's like, what? <laughs> and I get that a lot, all the time. Yeah, because I was like, because, you want to know what? I've had Dominican friends who look even more African ethnic features. And as much as you want to say, like, oh, those things don't exist, like, no, there are certain features that are more predominant in certain ethnic groups. That's that broad right. knows. So she, I mean, I'm talking about she had, like, a big old donkey booty, a big-ass <laughs> bell pepper-ass nose. She looked like yeah. she was slapped a couple times with, <laughs> with a black stick, okay? And oh she was like, God. I'm Dominican. But then I was like, but she was like, but I'm not black. And I was just like, because you are. let me tell you something. The reason why. So that's because, why when you said it, I I remember being like, what? Okay, how are you? How are you black? How you are sure? you black? You know, because I just had, and she wasn't the only one. Like, I just know so many, especially island Hispanics who are kind of like, you don't really know what they could be. Are they, are they black and white, biracial? Like what's happening? They just don't tend to say that I'm black and I'm Dominican. It's always like, I'm Dominican. I'm not black. Like, this is what I identify as. Because in reality, when somebody asks you, what are you? We only have so many races. You know, you have white, black, Asian, Hawaiian. That's pretty much what you well, kind of no, have. Well, now, like, on the little, when you had a check. Yeah, yeah, it's Hispanic, Hispanic, but it also says Hispanic. black. Yeah. Hispanic Pacific white. Either. Yeah. You're either oh, Hispanic yeah. black or Hispanic white. True. Oh, yeah. Now, I have a blowout now. Don't get me wrong. The silk press is silking. But <laughs> you can tell even like with my textured hair, okay, she has curly hair. Yeah. I look Hispanic. Yeah. But then when you ask, what are you? It's like, okay, I'm not Puerto Rican. I'm not Colombian. I'm not Cuban. I'm Dominican. Mm-hmm. And if you Google Wikipedia, if you mind you, you want to, Dominicans, the race, itself since that's what people want to put it as even though it's an ethnic background the race of dominicans are asian descent african-american taino indian asian and european did i say asian right yeah Yeah. okay well asian that's what it's for i was a double asian because (laughs) i know like they all but yeah asian african taino indian and european yeah so i mean and if i really really want to go there if we could look at my grandparents and then my parents i'm like okay I don't have not one person with blue eyes or green eyes or blonde hair, or I'm the person with the lightest hair, actually. Mm. My dad has black hair. My mother has black hair. I have... So all the features passing down. My mother has a broader nose than me. My dad has bigger lips than me. So because of that, because you are lighter skin, like back to her question, like, do you think that there is like a a, a a thing called a light skin privilege and things like that? I think that that it depends because that, you know... It's a touchy subject, but yeah. I like to say that there is a pretty girl privilege overall. Okay. And then there okay. is also, in some aspects, depending on the perspective of the person, there is a light skin and a dark skin privilege, depending. Yeah. You have black men that advocate only for dark skin women mm-hmm. and look at light skin women like, oh, immediately, like you look down upon because That's of so the way true. you naturally look. That's my ex. He couldn't see. Man. A light light skin women. Really? We are I'm looking at we have attitudes. I've never heard back. that before. We don't listen. We're we're cheaters. We're this. We have such a horrible 
Just like how when women look at a good looking man with green eyes and attractive, oh, he look a little sassy. Immediately, no. Immediately Just no. because he looks, he looks like a fuckboy. Or he looks like a fuckboy. But yeah. immediately, it's a, like a cage that we automatically put people in depending on how they naturally look. Oh my God, I think I, I've done that. Oh, I've looked at time. fine men and I'm like, oh, immediately now. Cheater. You too fine. <laughs> Cheater. Liar. You too fine. Immediately now. Yeah, I like he's it. too fine. Like, oh how can someone. Tell you you are too beautiful to be a good as person. As if you have like, any control. As if you have you any look. control. I mean, you have control over some aspects, right? Like if you want to have like a fit physique, or if you want to have great skin. Mm-hmm. But like your features, unless you're gonna have plastic surgery, like there ain't nothing you That's can do it. about that. Like, That's why I face. feel like being pretty is not like an accomplishment. No, <laughs> no. Like, you're gonna you're gonna do it more this is. way. <laughs> you did nothing. Like That's all you are is pretty. Like you're what mediocre. and what else? You and know? it's like so. is the difference between natural pretty and then Barbie pretty. Yeah. yeah, Barbie me, pretty is like the injection. Yeah. Like, you, you have know, to do all the things. Yeah, the you have to have a full beat, a wig, yeah. all the things. So, yeah. but it's funny that you feel like there's two sides to light skin privilege because mm-hmm. I know maybe a, a, a lot of people would beg <laughs> to differ that there is there are two sides to light skin privilege because most, most yeah because most especially black women feel like women who are lighter skin get more get the men more yeah. in Hollywood there's it's a lot of debate them. around them getting more roles I mean hell they painted Zoe Zaldana 19 shades of black to play <laughs> um what's the crazy not crazy not crazy the lady who had a mental illness and oh. she was a singer a jazz singer oh my god I'm having a breath I've had too many margaritas damn I can't remember she sings the the, the light the sky the blue, but you see Nina she, Simone. Oh, they painted Zoe Saldana in Nineteen Shades of Black to play Nina Simone, who was a very ethnically Dark, you don't have to guess woman. what kind of black she was black. Listen, and they from the painted Lane. this girl black. It was like blackface almost. Like she, it was Zoe Saldana is not a dark yeah. skinned woman. No. And they painted her black, and she even had to put a statement like, I'm so sorry, I didn't think about it like that. So these things, I'm just giving an example of things that happen in our world yeah. where yeah. it seems like they would rather take a light-skinned woman and paint her black than to just go ahead and call Viola. You know what I'm saying? Like, we can, we can call Viola. Listen, black. and Viola, be, listen, she be acting her ass off. Y'all ain't Ooh. seen uh, The Woman King. You know, so, so that's it. why it's hard it. for like me to hear you say like, oh, I'm light skin, but it's like, it depends on the size. It's like, I don't, what could, what are the down, like, what's the downside? Because the downside is just being looked at a certain way that we're automatically not. Like if you are, mm-hmm. okay. let's just say, like I said, an attractive person, mm-hmm. for example, because not all light skinned women are attractive. But, but a lot of times, right? a lot of times though, they get away with stuff because they are light skin. Like I know girls yeah. that because they're light skin, they are getting like attention or people are calling them beautiful because they're light skinned. And it's but just I think like, too, it's also the features that I was come to with say, it. Because you can I be agree. ugly with a nice I body. agree, but I feel like mm-hmm. a lot of times the features get overlooked for the skin complexion. But I also yeah. think too, it's an energy. So here's my thing. To me, when you were like pretty privileged, if you believe you're pretty, I promise you, you can convince somebody else. Yeah. Uh-huh. You can convince, uh-huh. I uh-huh. promise. Sometimes there ain't no debate. Ain't I mean, no it depends way on around it. It, it depends. depends. I think I the know. math only math is a time. No, I it's see. an energy, I promise. Uh-huh. I if you that. believe you are beautiful, I promise you, I you'll agree. find. I also believe I can fly, but I'm not jumping up the air car state. It stays on too. But to me, again, it just depends. I have ran across men that have always and oh you're attractive you're, but the way they project me is not who i am they just mm-hmm. look at me for what it is on the outside as yeah. a trophy so or feel- a side tool oh, okay they don't look at I you don't. as a woman they look at you as you need like a sex symbol because you're light-skinned they better mm-hmm. size you Ooh. oh my god we have beautiful children Oh, no guarantee. No well, guarantee no on that, that sir. Like, hell, what are you saying? Hell, <laughs> like, what the hell? Okay. I, yeah. Oh, we're going to have good hair too. <laughs> what? Like, it's the same way for me when I, you know, I'm five, eight and a half, five, nine. They look at me like, oh, we going to have D1 kids. Like, <laughs> I'm sorry, so what? Like, how you know our kids going to have two left feet? Like, yeah. the way you're just immediately fetishizing someone based off their appearance. It can go from light skin, dark skin, brown skin, light skin. It doesn't yes, matter. Yeah. It just goes based off of the person that's saying it. Yeah. To me, I feel like pretty privilege is overall whether you're pretty or not. Yeah. Now, light skin privilege, I do admit, I have witnessed it, but I also have witnessed it in a lot of other degrees. Okay. Mm-hmm. Because statistically speaking, out of my clientele that I've had in South Florida, there's a lot of mixed women out here, but mm-hmm. also white women that want to be mixed. Right, mm. and then you also have 
you know, black women that don't mind that they're black because they love, they're pretty, they're beautiful anyway. So they don't have a problem getting into the club, getting into the section. They don't have that problem. Yeah. What it is is the fact that they sexually fetishize white women mm. or Spanish women of some sort because they like the multicultural lingo. They want you to call them papi and all this extra stuff. Like I've actually witnessed those type of things. I have been asked like, oh, are you Spanish? And it's like, why? why? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Why? I can't translate anything for you. Like, what are you asking me to do? Like, what was the reason they were asking? I personally think it was just a preference that they wanted around them because of the environment. We were in a Spanish, you know, club. Miami clubs are very Spanish, white, black. They play all music. It doesn't even matter. Yeah. But we were at a story, and I feel like in the section, they only wanted Spanish girls. Oh. You know what I mean? Or white girls now mind you, these white girls are blonde hair blue white or dark hair like you like russian like yeah. different type of white not yeah. american white like yeah you, like european white yeah so you have like those fetishized perspectives and images that these people want to have sexually mm -hmm. so when you don't fulfill those things you're immediately a dub so women i personally see take offense when they are dubbed that they immediately projected like oh it's because i'm black or it's because I'm light skin, or it's because I'm this, because it's not a white hair, blonde hair, bunny. Yeah. It has nothing to do with us. It's the man that I feel like men try to separate us in that way. We are sexier here, or we talk dirtier because we look like this, or I we, think, you know. I think the men too, I, but I think, think women do it to ourselves too. Well, we have no choice once we're sitting there rejected at the table and we're looking at the other woman like, oh, because yeah. we're really looking at like, why her? When yes. in reality, the chosen person was because of the man choosing what it was. Yeah. We could have easily sat together. Mm. Yeah, but you I know? also think, like, we could, but there's also, like, this... It, I think it's men, but on such a, like, on a more deeper, insidious, like, macro level. Like, think of even just wearing extensions. Like, wearing hair extensions. Like, mm -hmm. somebody decided that this was a standard of beauty, that the European, that it's the European standard of beauty, that's the mm -hmm. males right now. Mm -hmm. And somebody decided that this is the standard of beauty, which is long hair, yeah. long, um, hair lighter long skin, hair. lighter eyes, like, as, as white as you can possibly get. But let's take the features from ethnic groups that we do like, like maybe a curvy ass, maybe some full lips. Like, it's like they kind of pick and choose. Like, oh, we don't like that big ass nose, but the lips look like, a, look like a <laughs> Yeah, lip. yeah. Um, you know, and they kind of pick and choose what they want from us and what they want to appropriate. And I do agree with you that I do see that a lot, especially here in Miami. But I definitely, and growing up in Miami, going to college in Miami, going to the club, like, that's where we party. Like, y'all and y'all little college towns where you party, you party in, like, the dorm room. Uh, and when you go to like a uh, Miami <laughs> college, you're partying on South Beach. You're partying yeah. in Brickle. You're partying like with the big dogs. Like yeah. you go to parties yeah. and like so celebrities are there. Like yeah. and you're like 19 years old. Like oh my god. Like Lil Bow Wow. <laughs> I'm old. Lil Bow Wow. What are you doing here? Chris Brown. Is that you? You partying on the yachts. And I have definitely in been in the situation. We both have. We talk about this all the time growing up. And you're at these clubs and you're 18, 19, and you've never experienced certain things. And you're there and you see 19 Spanish girls walk past you. Yeah. And you're standing outside the club and you're just like, I'm better than at least 12. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And it's like there gets to be this lower standard of real attractiveness because of being light skinned or being white or being Spanish. So that's yeah. why I feel like there's sometimes this unspoken beef and rivalry, <laughs> oh, rivalry. between <laughs> black <laughs> girls and Spanish girls because it's like this feeling of, why am I sitting outside the club looking at you walk past me and you're not actually more attractive. You just got long hair and you're Spanish, <laughs> but your face is fucked up for real or your features are not that great. I'm just giving you an example. It, I'm just giving an example <laughs> of what happens a lot, especially here in Miami. And I'm telling you, like, it has taken me a long time to do some real work to forgive my Spanish sisters. <laughs> <laughs> clearly, she's had a breakthrough, y'all. Yes, I'm clearly. Just, and you're the, a part of that, like getting close with like a, a Hispanic woman, a Latinx woman. Like, I just have not had good experiences with. Yeah. with Hispanic, Latinx, Spanish, all the things, women. And so for me, it's just been a journey of just kind of understanding the things that you've honestly taught me. Like, 
hey, like, it's not all that it's cracked up to be. Like, not. there's some fucked up sides to this story. Mm-hmm. And that's why I think it's so important to know because there is a rivalry between black women and Latinx women. And I always wondered why. Right? Really? I always wondered why because I wonder why go, too, because y'all got listen y'all just got dropped off a little bit earlier than we got dropped. But off. that's the thing we we all in the same boat if you really think about it is just the fact that we had a different demographic of them. We had like you know I think when you really go into the islands at least my island mm-hmm. I'm not sure I can't really speak on anyone else Colombian Cuban any other culture other than my own. Mm-hmm. But when you go to DR. Dominican Republic. Mm-hmm. <laughs> You're going to see some dark skinned um, women. Was shook. I was I could not believe that, are that most pure, how about most people are are they like are. dark skinned. Eighty percent. Eighty percent. I was like, where are all the mamacitas? Who are y'all? I mean, that's what I'm saying. The, these mamacitas, <laughs> right, are actually European descent. They are not But I'm what, saying I was shook when I went to DR and I was like, Where are the Hispanics? Are they here? Do you guys live here or no? Yeah. They're just, it's unfortunately, just um, if you think about it, when you go to the resorts, that's where you find them. Yeah. Working for the white people. Yes. Because mm-hmm. what else can we do? You go to Dominican Republic, there's actual communities of homes, residents, actual like schools and yeah. palaces that are only meant for the Europeans that are there, not for the mm-hmm. actual Dominicans. You can Google this. This is actually a real thing. Like wow. The only time you actually see it, any real Dominican person is when they're working for someone that lives there. That's definitely where I saw them in the hard rock. So, I think it just depends because I don't look at, I know this sounds probably ignorant, but I don't think that it's more so on the racism type of level. I think it's more so on the colorism type of level. Exactly. Because it's not that someone's black and someone's white and someone's Hispanic. You can go to the island and have the same problems. You have a lighter girl or a girl that is dark skin with more of a you know fetishized look to them because that's mm-hmm. what they want. It's like you can't just be a regular person. Mm-hmm. You have to have something that they fetishize, whether it's your skin tone, your boobs, your waist, your like your butt, your whatever. You know your yeah. extra contoured nose, your extra contoured like cheekbones, mm-hmm. whatever the case is. It, it they love something, and I look at it more on the colorism aspect because they're the same. They can come from the same mother at this point. Yeah. <laughs> really. It's just their features are looked upon differently. Yeah. And those features are looked on as their body size, their shape, and also the skin tone. Mm-hmm. And I mean, as crazy as it sounds, I don't feel like it's a problem when it comes to Spanish people in the in America mm-hmm. when you're American. Right? When you're American, we have an understanding of everyone, right? Because we all really mm-hmm. we all live here. Like we don't come from the island and then come to the states to judge okay. so others. You mean immig- Im- those like, who immigrated here. Yeah, those who immigrated here who come to Miami, who pretty much spend their money here because remember Miami is the capital of international money, yeah. not American money. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So sure. we have to kind of understand the difference here. It's not like we're being looked down upon from someone that's from the same city as you. You're looking being down upon to somebody that's from another country. So they're looking at us in a different level off rip. So I think that's why a lot of people are like, okay, yeah, you know, we have this problem with this girl that does she's looking at me crazy. She's also looking at it like, you know, her intentions in the States might be different than your regular everyday life, mm-hmm. you know? And people do struggle in the islands. And the things that they do to keep a meal on their on their table or things like that, we all Im- immediately are looked upon that way just because that our island may be doing those things. Mm-hmm. Just because we are in America, I'm from here, I'm, I'm born in America. My mother isn't, I'm first generation American, but that doesn't mean the things that they do in DR, I'm gonna do too, just because I'm Dominican. Mm-hmm. So it's like also, a stigma that's attached to you. It's a stigma attached to the background from. of everywhere too. Uh, you have to understand when someone is looked upon, like when you're from New York, I, my family is raised in New York, Jamaicans, Dominicans, Puerto Ricans, we have a stigma. Yeah. Off rip. Just like how they say the Haitians and the Jamaicans, they don't get along. It's a stigma between that and there's a reason behind it. It's not like these people just make this up and pull what out do you, What do you think it is between black women and Latinx women? The fetishes that men mm. capitalize around. So it just goes back to what women literally have been taught to fight against their whole life is yeah. to fight to get the man. 
And it's the battle of the man. Mm-hmm. It's the battle of the it's man. Who can get the man? If yeah. the man likes this more and you are this, I automatically dislike you simply because the man likes you more. Because he perceives you more sexier depending on what you bring. Mm. So it all goes back to, so we just got to get rid of the men. I'm just kidding. <laughs> that's, but I, I, that's why I look back when I see I when women me. going combative with each other. I think it's like, okay, what are you guys combating over? The yeah. prize of who's the prize that you, what, what are you guys battling over? Yeah. The man. Yeah. Or the attention. I'm going to say, yeah. The I think center of attention. So the attention. The attention of the man. Because yeah, the attention of the man. Most times, you don't even really want the man. You no, want you want the attention. the attention. And the perks that it comes with. Yeah. You're treated like a princess. Yeah. Showing off. What are what are some of those perceived benefits of being a Latinx woman? Like, taking it a, a step above oh, we are being light-skinned. We are mama now. Like, what are some of those <laughs> perceived benefits that aren't really, that's not really how it is? Yeah. Because um, I feel like, I feel like, okay, Spanish girls get, like, all the um athletes. Because we're supposed to be home cooking and cleaning and taking yeah, care of the kids. Yeah, Spanish girls. And we don't like, cheat. they get in the club before me. <laughs> It's like now. all Miami Cup promoters, if you guys are hearing this, you guys are in big trouble. Okay. <laughs> yeah, no, because it's offensive. And it's not even mm-hmm. like me. Like I have friends that are darker than me and things like that. And I remember like I could get in the club and they can't. And it's just like our money is still green. We gonna spend our good cash and yeah. get these bottles. We dare sure ain't gonna be nobody's section because nobody wants it. So we have to go to the bar and spend money. You benefit off of us more than this person that goes into the club with this bottle of this table of bottles. Like you know, it's just I've just it's not even just my own experience. I can be honest that I haven't experienced it as much as I've seen it experienced by friends and just other girls sitting at that outside the club. And you're yeah. like, well, damn, like why should you be in the club too? So it's one of those things where it's like, I think sometimes, just like you said, of course, it's for the attention of the man, but I think a lot of it is perceived and not the reality. So that's why I wanted you to kind of break down, like, what are some of those things that's like, people think that's what's happening, but that's not how it's translating and that's not your actual experience being fetishized in that way. I mean, the whole pick me type of situation, because that's what it is, you know, like everybody wants to be chosen. Yeah. And, um, and I can understand that. Right. And it kind of can eventually, when you're not chosen, it kind of like starts to make you wonder why. And it can be from anything because I've seen girls that are a little bit more heavier set and they can be light skinned, they can be pretty, but just because of that stigma. And I think even when it boils down to colorism, that stigma is the same dark yeah. skin, black, or anything is ugly. That's what yeah. that stigma goals behind yeah just like if you let's just say oh you don't have no hair like oh you a boy it's the same stigma when there's plenty of black women or whatever women that have short hair that are rocking the fuck out of it so it's just like it doesn't matter but the stigma behind it i think all of us as a community contribute to it yeah because we don't emphasize when a woman of a different complexion is doing something that another woman isn't we don't emphasize and congratulate or pedestals certain people and then we wonder well why are we not being chosen we don't even choose ourselves sometimes Ooh, Ooh, that's a word that's so a word. That's a word. It, it just to me working with women for the past 12 years yeah consistently every day and not being around the man testosterone on a day-to-day basis like yeah. i've been around women i have been able to kind of put myself outside the show of who i am as a woman mm. and wonder Damn, how am I being perceived? Yeah. What am I congratulating? What am I loving? What am I, you know, pedestaling in my life to look up upon? Like, why? Is it because she's pretty? Is it because she's rich? Is it because she has the man? Is it because she's light-skinned and she's like, has a bigger booty than me? Like, what is it yeah. that we love in project of, like, these people? Like, we make these people so important. But then we wonder why the good qualities that we have about ourselves aren't being looked at as important. Because we don't even see them as important. We don't. And so it literally goes back to what you were saying. And it's so funny because literally as you were speaking, I was like, but all of this could be a void. We could literally transform our entire experience (laughs) if we just accept the fact that who I am as I am is dope as fuck. Who I am as I am is dope it is worthy it is phenomenal beyond worthy it is beyond worthy but if we get back to accepting that piece and part right there it changes the game because 
if I'm feeling this way and I'm your friend and I'm talking to you, you gonna eventually start picking that same thing up and then you talking to Dee Marie. It's like she, energy is transferable. Yeah, because now it's a, it's a mind complex that we're thinking we're socially on the same level when if you really think about it, right? Because I had to put myself in the situation. If I'm around all these women all the time, right? Mm-hmm. And their perspectives and the reason why they think the way they think and the reason why they're being looked at like, oh, why is this person mean this? Is because they want something that the other person is getting at that yeah. moment. Yeah. That's yeah, pretty much what it is. is. Yeah. Like that's you're only noticing it because that person it. got it, right? Yeah. yeah. And you want it. It's a pick me situation. Like mm. I think of it too, like, listen, baby. I've had some good looking men, some me, mid, mid ugly men, and some boo hoo ugly men too. Like, boo hoo, I had to cry, like, why I give this man a chance? <laughs> okay? So to me, I look at it like at the end of the day, you're looking at like a pick me, but who are you getting chosen from? These, they're Ooh. douchebags. They're not Ooh. even anyone you want to talk to. I say that all the look time. Look at the, what they're That's why I say a lot of things all the time, but I always say that. Like, when I see, like, I remember yeah. before I got married. Oh, I would like years, years ago. ago years ago <laughs> when I would look and you know like you you just have these it doesn't happen all the time but mm-hmm. have you ever had like a moment where like you're on Facebook scrolling and such and such from 1999 nobody's scrolling six on grade. Facebook anymore six. <laughs> nobody is scrolling on Facebook I'm it's not even on Facebook ever, but I feel like Facebook is just where you see like your old old high school friends like Yes. Like back in the day, like it's always like such and such from class of whatever. Your first phase and of identity. And then you see her and then she like, is she's getting married. And you can be fine, you can be in a decent relationship and then you just like, well, why are you getting married? <laughs> <laughs> right? And I remember one day and it was like I had this little epiphany of somebody I knew in high school who I just decided was not an attractive person was, <laughs> was getting married, right? And... I was at the time I wasn't married. I I think I was like single at the time, and I was just like, "Well, damn! Like, what's wrong with me? Like, why is she getting married?" And then and then it was like for some reason when one person gets married, you start seeing like nine, like everybody gets married. Yeah, everybody. Like, the next day, somebody else is engaged. Somebody else had a baby, and then it's just like this: like, what is happening? What's wrong with me? And then I thought to myself, and I was like, "But would I marry that man?" <laughs> Right. Probably not. Yeah, probably right? not. Like, and and it's not. that and, and so it's so funny you said that because I thought I was the only asshole who felt like that. No. <laughs> like, like, <laughs> damn, I'm an asshole because I really this is like thank God he chose you because I would have chosen you. Like, like, yeah. And we forget that? no, but we forget that because we don't even think about the specifics. We just think about being mm-hmm. chosen. It don't yeah. even matter who you're by. <laughs> but no, but that's the biggest thing. What matters what most is. is who are you being chosen by. Ooh. The one thing my therapist said, oh my goodness, I loved her as my therapist. I can't say her name because I don't remember her name. Um, <laughs> oh, but so no, much of love. No, but I did. I loved her. She's my therapist in New York. The number one thing that she told me, which I still carry to this day. She said, what happens a lot of times, especially in multicultural households and black households and in households where religion plays a major part, you were always focused on people choosing you, but you forget the most important thing is for you to choose you first. Ooh, because hello. when you hello. choose you, that's a word. When you choose you, you operate. There is a different type of energy that you move about the world in. Yeah, yeah, it's you, very different. You move in the world so much different when you choose you first. There's certain things you won't even accept. Then it is a Okay, yeah. congratulations that this person is getting married. Yeah, then you can this really be happy for you. Yeah. And then it shifted for me. Like, I remember Shifts. feeling like, wow, good for you. Like, I'm so excited for you. Like, that is good for you. For you. For you. Because what's for you is it's for, for you. you. And then, yes. okay, I, and then another, I had this other epiphany the other day, right? So, because I was thinking about this conversation that we were having and that we were going to have. So, the other day, I was taking, um, I have, like, gold... Is it, is it still silverware? What do you call that? Like utensils. Oh, okay. I have gold utensils, right? Okay. And on the package when you get them, it specifically says, do not put them in the dishwasher too much. Mm-hmm. Right? So when I first got them, I would like, hand, like I would put everything else in. I'm a dishwasher girl. I would put everything in the dishwasher <laughs> and then leave those out and then hand wash those and dry them up. And I'm oh, just no. like, Doing this is inconvenient. I have a whole baby. I got a dog. <laughs> I got a bonus kid. I got a whole man. I don't got time to be hand drying utensils. You see the nails. Y'all see the peach nails. I just, it's just not my thing. 
So anyways, I, I was so, <laughs> so after like maybe two months of doing that consistently, I was like, fuck this, I'm going to the dishwasher. Every single time I wash it, I need to wash the dishes. So the other day, I was taking them out and I started seeing them get just <laughs> Oh my God. But you know, didn't go no, listen, I'm going As somewhere. if they didn't even say that on the I'm box. going somewhere though, so listen. So I, I promise you, I, I have epiphanies like this all the time. I'm just like, what? Like, what is happening with me and God? But I promise you, so I'm cleaning it and I see like it's starting to get tarnished and like silver. And I'm like, that's what you get for one or something that you saw somebody else with that you ain't know what to do with it. <laughs> that's what I get. I was on Instagram and I see the little influencer with her little gold utensils. I was like, oh, I want some gold. I want them. I don't have the patience, the time, the energy, the desire to hand wash shit. <laughs> so I don't need delicate shit in my life that I got to hand wash. I don't want no fine china right now. I don't want nothing that can be thrown in the dishwasher. And after it might sit there for three days, I don't want them I got to take out. Let me tell you something. Stop wanting things that you see somebody else with that if you got it, you would just destroy it. Yeah. It's not for you. It might not be for you this time. Maybe in 10 years when my children are grown, I could get some you gold, get gold somewhere. somewhere. Get some diamonds in that bitch. And let's hand wash it. I'll wipe it down with a microfiber cloth. <laughs> Whatever <laughs> I need to do at that time. But at this time in my life, that does is not suit you. It's just not for me. Mm. I promise you I got that from cleaning some utensils that were discovered. Yeah. Because it's some real shit. Like it happens to us so much where you're just pining and yearning for somebody else's life and you don't know all that comes with it. You right. don't know. I didn't know that I was gonna have to do all that with the gold you just look like just open the dishwasher like everything else. No. Nope. How was I supposed to know they were delicate? <laughs> <laughs> It says on the box. <laughs> but I didn't know that before I ordered it. It wasn't until I got it. I was like, man, it's straight. Man, we are right in the dishwasher. And that's why I say, you get a, we, we feel a way because we wasn't picked, but who is doing the picking? Who that part? is doing the man, The, the man that's cheating on you? The man that is on the road and fucking this girl and that girl? That doesn't and look it, at you as a human being, but just as an actual body? Yeah. Because that's what it might go it boils down to. Mentally, they're never going to stimulate you. They're never going to caress Ooh. your mind. They're never going to care for Is your mind. Is it because they don't feel like you even have a mind worth caressing? You're a bot. You're a vessel. Ooh. You're not. You're empty inside, Ooh. but you fit the picture. I look at it like a lot of times. Men are constantly deep. looking I didn't even for think a about puzzle that. You're piece. You're a vessel. What? You're a vessel because if you're not stimulating and taking care of me mentally, emotionally, Ooh. what are you be doing? You're just taking care of my body that's already deteriorating day by day, minute by minute. Oh, shit. That's already going. That's already dying. You don't need to kill that. That's but already. But you feel dying. like they're treating you like that because they don't even. They don't even think. They about don't the care body. about that because they're looking for that puzzle piece to fit the image that they're looking for, not the wow. their other side of their heart that might help them grow, maybe self development, maybe get to the next level mentally or financially, right? Mm. But more so. Fitting the picture perfect for the Christmas cards oh, or wow. for going out the event, having a good look it's on that side look. of your arm. I've heard that before. I've actually good look. heard a guy say that. That's a like, good look. Oh, she's a good look. That's a good look. Like, that's look. That's she was a good look. A good look. I've had that. I have had. Oh, damn, bro. Your wedding. Perfect example. Yeah. I was out with someone that we, I've known Danny for years, right? Mm -hmm. I've never met Reggie, but before. Yeah. And um, we have uh, mutual friends that we, and it just so happens to be like, oh my God, we had mutual friends and yeah. I didn't even know. Yeah. yeah. So that was cool, right? And uh, we linked up at the wedding with mutual friends immediately because that's the only person I know. I don't see my only friend there. So <laughs> the only other friend I have here is right here. Yeah. The other man didn't even bother asking me what my name was who oh, I was or anything oh, like that. Oh my God, how, you know, are you our friend of the bride or the groom? Like, how do you know this person? How are you yeah. doing? None of that. He immediately like, yo bro, that's you? That's all you, bro? That's a good look, bro. It's like, I'm sorry, what? Like, I'm not even standing here. I said nothing. How do you know I'm a good look? I always tell, when men like- But how do you know that that's true? Why are you automatically assuming Because of the image. No. And why are you automatically assuming that I'm even dating this person? And why are you giving him congratulations? Yeah, like props. As yeah. props, as if we are even eligible to date. 
Do I look like <laughs> not eligible? I'm sorry. Don't take this the wrong way, but baby, I got I got to say it for what it is. <laughs> if men are continuously looking at someone and looking at you and be like, "Oh yeah, why are we not being the one choosing? Why are okay. we choose? I'm but choosing. we have to be chosen. I'm so choosing. I'm choosing as hell. Like, don't pull up next to me and on this song Ultima. First of all, what you're not gonna do Which is it's fine. I'm just saying, if I'm driving a big body Benz, like you are not about <laughs> black on black AMG, <laughs> you are not about to pull up to me next to some bullshit and feel like it's insulting. Like, I'm sorry, and I'm I'm saying I'm using a materialistic. Uh, comparison. possession to do a comparison of yeah. just levels to life like yeah. you're not gonna like why are you stepping to me in the first place like we're not we're not in the same world like what do you think what are we about to do what are we about to do but that's something again that bothers me right because a man off rip has to do has the privilege to do the choosing we don't have the privilege to do the choosing I, you know that's I what it's looked it. upon, right? I choose. I, when I tell you, I'm the most choosy motherfucker I know. As you should be. As you no, should but be. But, you, but, but what do you say when like people feel like, especially the independent? You spoke a little bit about your own hyper independence, where we're so independent. Like in Jamaica, they have a saying where you pick till you pick shit. <laughs> where it means like <laughs> you so picky and you just picking and picking and picking until you 55 and, and, and you, you have want nobody child, else and you want children and you have no children you don't have a man you in a big old mansion by yourself because you were so independent that you just kept picking and picking and picking and picking with your laundry list of of things requirements you yeah. know so how do you even strike the balance of I want to be choosy but I want to be so picky that I'm unrealistic know your flaws uh, yeah, that's what I was going to say. And know your too, flaws? Yes. Well, no, how does knowing your flaws help you not be picky? Because then I know what I can deal with. Like, if I'm... Okay. So and knowing how, yourself, period. It, it's not right. about what you can deal with. It's what this person is going to deal with. But I because that's another thing. For, yeah. Of course for you, too. Yeah, but yeah. you're already picking him. So you should already be doing that. Right? Yeah. And now, I've done this with women plenty of times with my clients. They do this. I'm like, okay, girl, listen. We all know we're not the, the sweetest batch out the sour patch, right? <laughs> so we understand we got a sour patch. Kid. We have we, we come with some stuff, right? We're Everybody not does. perfect. Yeah. Nobody is. Yeah. But we know what is perfect and what isn't perfect. And we for know us. what we for us what and for you, yeah. what someone is willing to tolerate. Like if you really think about, no one's gonna tolerate a liar. No one's gonna tolerate a cheater. They will tolerate to a certain extent. Right, mm-hmm. as they will, but it's always going to come with backlash. But are they happy, or are they? Is it a that's the backlash though? Yeah, the complaints, the tears, the untrustworthiness, the, the toxic yeah. shit that comes with it, all of that. Right, those are all behavior patterns that mm-hmm. come with after lying or after cheating. Yeah, mm-hmm. some people don't look at like, okay, once you lie and cheat, there's nothing, and once you lie and cheat, I'll forgive you, but I'm gonna be on your ass. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's what this person's willing to deal with. Yeah, I know I don't lie. I'm one of the most honest people, unfortunately. I'm too honest. I mean, that could be my downfall when it comes to certain things. I've actually realized that is a big downfall for me. I'm too honest. Mm -hmm. And I think because I lack emotion behind my words, they take it so bluntly and so harshly that I don't mean to be that way. It's just that I don't find joy in beating around the bush and sprinkling sugar over the salt. Like, I might as well just give it to you raw and whether you take it, you take it. And if you don't, you have to understand you have to have a certain layer of hardship over you to deal with me. Immediately, my man has to be a man's man. You can't be no sissy boy. You can't be crying once I cuss you out. Oh, wait, well, we gotta cuss him out. As I'm saying, it might get there. You wanna know why? Because I know myself. If I am frustrated and be like, oh my God, I can't talk to you right now. Please get the fuck away from me. No. That'd be like, oh my God, why are you talking to me like that? It's like, it's not you, but I am frustrated. And that's my flaw. I am a natural emotional person. I'm a Scorpio. So off rip, I'm going to project my emotions, whether you like it or not. Oh, and okay. unfortunately, <laughs> that is what comes with dealing with me. I'm a pretty bitch, but also I'm a bitch. Oh, no. So like at the end of the day, it's like I can admit that. Yeah. Why? Because I'm 30 and I know who I am. I'm a sweetheart. I'm a teddy bear. I am literally. Until you cuss enough. Yeah, but you want to know why that comes with just that? Right up until just, just right up until that, right? right? But I know what takes me there. Mm. So if I know you are going to be that man that immediately dismisses you. my... Yeah, like you dismiss my emotions. You're egoistic. Or you have some type of, you know, behavior pattern about yourself that I know triggers me. I'm not going to deal with you. 
So that's Simple where as the that. choosiness comes in. That's where your choosiness like, should come from. You're not giving me, like, I know that being with you doesn't feel safe. Like, I think mm-hmm. that's a big thing to be choosing. Yeah. yeah. how safe you feel around yeah. men. And I think a lot of times there'd be, like, blaring, loud, red flag. Don't do In your face. And we ignore it because we Completely. want to be chosen. Bring you yeah. back. Yeah. You want to be chosen so badly so that you ignore all the signs. Like, I'm sure there are so many Latinx women who feel fetishized and they feel like nobody cares yeah. about what they have to say and they feel like, well, damn, I have an opinion or yeah. damn, like, I'm smart. Like, yeah, damn, like, like baby I'm educated. Too. Like, I'm more mm-hmm. than just a pretty face and long hair and a big ass or whatever. And they'll still be like, okay, but at least I'm with this guy and I'm chosen because I do know from having Latinx friends that being chosen by a man is like it's the, the bee's knees. Yeah. It's like, it's the that ultimate. is life. Like, you are literally yeah. groomed, especially the woman. From what I understand, you can correct me if I'm wrong because I'm not Latinx, but well, I just found out that it's like, I just found out that my grandparents, that my, grand, my, my great grandparents are from Cuba. I mean, you're not Cuban. Oh, yeah. I just, I was like, all this little animosity that I had um, with Mama Cita's ass. Look at me. percentage though no but no it's not the men i've been inviting into my universe because i only allow what i accept yeah they are some of the biggest communicators i feel like we have to shift our focus i'm a firm believer and i get to decide how my life and world will look period yeah. period i don't care what it has been what it what, what it could have been what it had been in the past i get to decide how my life will look feel and be based on my thoughts my words my decisions and my actions Period. Yeah. So the moment I decided that mm, I don't like a man who cannot communicate his feelings, his emotions, when he's hurting, hey, tell me, hey, not right now. I can't because I'm happy go lucky 90% <laughs> of the time. 90% of the time, I'm like, hey, yo, what's up? How we doing? What we doing? Da, 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 da. That can be real, real aggravating for a motherfucker who's going through some shit. Yeah. So Because they're not trying to be happy right now. <laughs> so maybe we can use that same approach especially maybe like if you're someone listening to this and you do feel some kind of animosity or you feel that like thing that and hurts. like that thing sometimes when you are out of the club and a Spanish girl that is maybe a five <laughs> walks past you and you're eight and you feel some type of way like maybe it's just about changing the perspective of like you know what? That's not her. Like it's not your fault that you're his, that you're Latinx and you're being walked in because that person is so shallow. Yeah, that, that person, person doesn't see me. Yeah. Like a lot of times, it's a, it's a I see me. I you see, see me, you. and like let me try to see you for who you are. Maybe I'll be like, I get call like, hey girl, you cute. Like yeah, I like yeah. those shoes. Like maybe just having more conversation and being friendlier. And I think that Latinx woman can. I think for me, and just, again, this is just my experience, I do sometimes feel like the Latinx community, and it's not just the women, tend to appropriate blackness when it's convenient. So it's yeah. like, it's nigga this, uh, hip-hop that, fat-ass that, cornrows, chancletas, long nails, whatever, when it's convenient, but when a black man is getting gunned down, I don't see no mama teachers on my timeline talking about... Uh, this black man getting shot. No, seriously. No, and they will literally have I, black children or be yes. married to black men. And, and they are very their silent. Hair. And J-Lo said <laughs> all lives matter. So it's like, sometimes it just gets frustrating when certain, when cultures feel like they're appropriating and they're black, as black as they want to be when it's convenient to be black and when they want to be Hispanic, when they want to be Spanish, mm-hmm. when they want to be white passing, when yeah. they want to be around... Like socially baby. accepted... They're not that black anymore. They mm-hmm. switch it up and all of a sudden they're over here with those people because that's what's convenient. I mean, that's literally how Irish people and Italian people became white people. Italians yeah. and, and Irish people were like the bottom of the barrel. When yeah, they came Hitler to didn't want them either. Yeah, like they were the bottom <laughs> like, of the barrel when they came to America mm-hmm. and they decided that they were going to side with the, the white Americans at the time and they 
were a part of labor unions to um, disenfranchise black men. Mm -hmm. So it's just like, it feels like a lot of cultures do that to us where it's like, oh, we're going to let you in and we're going to do all these things and we're going to be brothers and sisters and we're Mm -hmm. all people of color and we're all (laughs) like these people that are in these communities that are disenfranchised. But then when you want to be white or when you want to be something else, that's what you are. And I think for, I know for me personally, that's where some of my issues come in, where it's just like, how come you're only really that black when you feel like it? And you're not black when it really matters. I personally think it's a culture thing. I've seen it in the culture thing. Mm -hmm. Personally, I've been around it a lot. I've been in other cities, other Mm -hmm. states. Mm -hmm. I've been around multicultural people, whether it be anything, especially in the male business, you're around a lot of Asians. Yeah. You're a lot around the Russians. You're a lot of, you're a lot of different people. Yeah. yeah, it's the culture. I've had a girl from, and this is no joke, a girl from Vancouver, Canada. Okay, Vancouver. Okay, nail artist as well, and um, she was very uh, cultured in a way where she was like Indian, right? Mm-hmm. She's Indian, first generation Indian. Okay, okay. but she is. Uh, you know, whitish kind of like, you know, very, um, like she doesn't, obviously she doesn't like date black men, but she will like, oh my God, he's fine. Like, you know, she'll say stuff like that. But she also fetishized about over the entertainment aspect of black culture. Mm. Yeah. Because I mean, that's what, that's that's a thing. thing. It's a thing. Right. Like she was like, oh my God, dude, you're just so funny. Like when you're just like, out here, like, cuss, like you know, and this is where I think it's so funny. I'm always constantly looked at cussing people out just because I have an attitude or I have a, a way of being like, uh, no girl. Like, yeah, like, yeah, no girl. And it's like, what? <laughs> like, I'm sorry. She's like, yeah, like, you're at, like, it's my attitude. My, and like your, your my phone, lingo, your pizzazz. my pizzazz, my own mm. natural pizzazz, your sauce. my yeah, own sauce, sauce. sauce. that they look at like, oh, it's so entertaining. <laughs> Ooh. You're just so entertaining. And I'm like, why? So she'd be like, dee, 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 yeah, like on some clown show because she literally looks at like, you are able to be this way. Mm-hmm. One, because she's like, yeah, because like, you know, you can do that. And it's like, what does that mean? What does that mean? Well, so many of the cultures are suppressed. That's why they're that's suppressed. Like, very much so. So expressive. And we're mm-hmm. so like, so I think that's why they're like, ooh, what is that? Like, why are you getting, why yeah. are you loud? Like, they talk shit about us being loud, but it's like, they want to be loud. They want to be loud. They want to be like cut that. somebody out. You mm-hmm. want to like, I wish y'all would because somebody has that They want to project that size Like, size. that would be great. Like, can mm-hmm. we try that? Like, can we take like step one in anger? Like, step one in anger is cuss a bitch out. Can we not skip all the steps and go straight to shooting a motherfucker up? I'm just saying. I just feel like we can change the world if we just did some stuff. But this is what it is. Like she, it, it's true. It's very true. Like I, I told y'all don't give me margaritas. <laughs> Cup number three. <laughs> <laughs> she get it when I drink. Sorry. But it's not sorry. Sorry. <laughs> sorry, but not sorry. So we have spoken in this entire conversation about our outer appearance, how we're judged by it, how we're objectified by it, how we do become the object of someone's fetish based on our appearance. Mm-hmm. And the, the the natural conclusion that we've all come to is A, don't look at somebody else's plate and want to eat off of it because you don't know how that tastes. Mm-hmm. That's just yeah. number one. And even mm-hmm. if you're going to digest it right, you're yeah, allergic. Yeah, you listen, allergic. you should be allergic. You know, <laughs> like, you don't want to go to the hospital. <laughs> listen, keep your oxygen on plate number one. That's true. But because there are so many outside influences, mm. it can mm. be frustrating or sometimes you can get clouded by how all of the other people who are looking at you and telling you what you should be, how it should look, and so yeah, you should add exactly you should speak. <laughs> so what is something that you feel that people just would not know by looking at you and then what do you believe makes you beautiful mm. that's a good question those, those are you? some really good <laughs> questions <laughs> right that was good that was a good question i should have studied these questions like <laughs> honestly because um i don't even know it's it's pretty hard to answer that when I say what makes me me, other yeah. than my ideology that's completely different than everyone else's. Yeah. Um, it's so funny because I got that tattoo here with an eyeball with a tree because mm-hmm. you see your vision and your growth. 
nobody can see it or understand it. Yeah. You know, you know where you're planted. You know how you started, yes. how you were watered, and how many times you died and came and came back. Only you yes. know. So I would like to say that my ideology is a little bit different. Yeah. The way that I'm able to accept people and their flaws. Mm. Like, that's something that I feel like a lot of people are not able to do. Mm. I'm able to accept a lot of things with people because I know no one is perfect. Yeah. And I'm okay with that. Yeah. Like, I know I'm looked at like, oh, you look like this. Or you should be like this. Like, I've had an ex boyfriend be like, oh, if you were just like, you know, 20 pounds lighter, you would be the baddest bitch ever. Da, da, da. Like, immediately. Immediately, no. Yeah. But at the time where I was in my age, mm. I looked at that as acceptable. Mm. Why? Because his opinion mattered. Mm. Because it was an acceptance era in my life where I had to go through, like, I want to just be accepted. Yeah. Because I looked at such a way off rip because of how I look mm -hmm. that I'm identified as, like, oh, like, mm. she looks sedated. Or she looks bougie. Or she looks like she's stuck up. And it's like, I just look this way. He's like, hey, I hope I look this way. You know what yeah. I mean? When in reality, if you know me, I'm one of those type of people like I'm always high in my corner in my zone. I just be chilling. But if yeah. you know me, you know me. Yeah. You know, Ooh. like I'm oh, you, you, you know, you know. But if you just look at me from just my social media, I will look like a person like oh my god, like she just looks a certain way. When I can't help that I'm pretty. Yeah. Like, what do you want me to do? That doesn't mean I'm mean. That doesn't yeah. mean I'm not accepting of others. I have a really soft heart for animals. Like a really soft heart. <laughs> Y'all keep all the animals. Like, yes, it is. I adopt from shelters. Like, yeah. people don't know things like that. Like, I'm a crybaby. I cry at all movies. If I see <laughs> animals on TV, I cry. If I see, like, The Notebook a thousand times, I cry. Like, like my nose is crying with me. Like, literally. <laughs> that's, the, that's the Viola thing. That's the <laughs> Like I am That's the Viola crack. The we Viola love crack. Viola over here. We we love her. Mm -hmm. If people were to ask like That's about me, true. I mean the only thing that someone will look at and I know is that I am a sensitive, savage teddy bear. <laughs> I love it. Mm -hmm. I would like to add something, like, you know, from what I observe with you. Like I don't think people, like I said in the introduction, know just how smart you are. Yeah. Um, I do think that that's something that is a really negative stereotype of Latinx women, mm -hmm. that they are not highly intelligent women, um, and that they're banking. Everything is just like weighted on their looks. You yeah. Know? So like I said, you are one of the Latinx women who really opened my eyes and helped me to heal from any kind of issues I had with that community because it was just like, okay, like you tell me your insecurities or you'll tell me like, man, this guy is like just talking to me, but he's not even seeing me for real. Like no. that was like, that hurt me when you said that to me one time. Like he doesn't even see me for like who I am. Like he just cares about how I look. And it's just yeah. like, you don't think about that. And as someone who, of course, like if you, on my spectrum, like in, in the black community, outside the Latinx community, I am a lighter black person. So I have had black, darker skinned black girls have those issues with me. But it's so funny that like I can, you can also be on both sides of the coin as a black woman where you can be like an attractive black woman in the black community. But then outside of that, the you, black queen. Feel, you feel an issue between Latinx women and black women. So it's like, there's always yeah. something, it's always. Yeah. you know, there's always some always. shit. There's everyone has some insecurity, some shit that's bothering them, some yeah. shit that they're working through something that makes them feel smaller than the next person. So that's why it's so important to be kind, Absolutely. to be open-minded, to be open to new energies and new yeah. friendships, to ask questions, to have these yeah. conversations with people that you think you don't like or you think are stuck up or you think are bitches. Right. Like every girl I know with the resting bitch face is so sweet. <laughs> that's me. Every last one. Like you ever like, you take, let me tell you, let me tell you the trick. <laughs> Me, a resting bitch face girl in the bathroom at the club when she's drunk. <laughs> Tell her she's cute and she lights up like a fucking Christmas tree. Like, <laughs> you are like, oh my God, like, I thought she was a bitch. Every friend I've had is like, oh my God, I thought you were such a bitch. 
until you get to know until people. To so know let's people. stop just judging people yeah. from the outer appearance and or let's let's just be a little bit more intentional in having conversations, sparking up conversation with people that you think are too good because really it's you. Like it's, yeah, really it's, it's insecurity. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We're projecting all the type of way. And yeah. I have to learn that with myself. Yeah. Like I have some kind of insecurity yeah. that's making me feel less because I feel like I need to be the prettiest. So yeah. oh she might be prettier than me. And it's just like it's not about that. It's really not. Like, who am I on the inside? Like, am I pretty on the inside? Is my mind pretty? Do I have something else to offer? Like, who am I? Do they even like themselves? And then (laughs) and then that makes you and then that makes all that physical material shit very relevant. Out the window. It really does. I think it goes back to number one, are you choosing yourself? What is it about you? That you really fuck with. Like when I say I'm fucking with you. And that makes people want to fuck with you. Listen, when you fuck with you heavy, you can't help but project that energy out into the world. The right energy. The right energy. Because like, yo, I really like myself. Yeah. And it can take a really long time, honestly, for women to get there. It took me. It took me 30 years. I got it. I'm I'm all the way there. I'm still climbing that mountain. I'm halfway. (laughs) It took me a long time to get there. But when you can literally get down to the nitty gritty to where, you know what? I love me some me. You invite a totally different type of energetic yeah. frequency into your universe. Yeah. You start to experience life differently. You yeah, look, you look at, at and treat different. others differently. Differently. Different. You're different. not worried about, oh, she's too beautiful or oh, she's or got like, this or oh, her breasts are this or her ass is that. You are focused on the fact that, yo, this is another dope soul that I can now connect and online with yeah. because yeah. I'm dope too. Yeah, and now yeah. and then you'll like even fall like I'll see like a beautiful woman or I'll see and it's like competition doesn't even come to my brain. No, no like I'm just like, like oh we should be friends. You can't work going like you know like right. you start to because you you start to fall in love with yourself. Yeah. You realize that like. Everyone has something more to offer. Yes. Who they, what they look like is the least of it. Yeah, you're not like, putting yourself in a competitive least, it's error. It's just like, like a that's, plus. Like, that's just the least of it. So it's yeah. like, if, kind of, if I can connect with you and have a conversation with you, I don't care what you look like. Yeah. And what you look like is not going to determine how I feel about myself. Like, that's yes. crazy to me that I, I, yeah. I feel like you look back at past versions of yourself like, why was I ever even thinking about that? Yeah. But we're yeah. so conditioned to think like that and to think every other woman that has something that we don't is competition. Yeah. When it's like, no, you have something that I don't teach me. Show me. But that's Bitch, your last look good. Where do you go? Yeah. Like, can we, like use those things as it's a as thing as competition use it as an asset to yourself like yeah. see how you can communicate and connect with people Personal that maybe have things you don't have Absolutely. so that you can be better as opposed to shunning them and insulting them and being a mean girl yeah. and talking shit about them and putting them down because you're jealous it's like Absolutely. let's flip the jealousy into like Oh. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. and companionship and yeah. and curiosity and be like, hey girl, like you are really beautiful. Like, what's happening be- here? And and you know what's so funny you say that? That's something that like I have noticed like big time through the shift of even before COVID. I stopped giving a fuck about how many guys, you know, how many followers or how I never cared about it before, but it's like when someone brings it up, I immediately like tune out. Like, I'm going to let you speak, but, yeah. it's just but I'm not going to internalize anything that you're saying. Because yeah. at this point, it's like, I'm not in that phase. When you're in an area in your life where you're looking at others at competition because that insecurity is, like, hindering below certain layers yeah. of you, that's because you haven't reached that level of personal development yet, right? Yeah. Yeah. Which I can completely understand yes. because I've been there. Like, for me, when he was asking what's, like, the one thing I love about myself the most is the chameleon in me. Mm-hmm. Being able to now adjust to my boundaries and what makes me comfortable to be in situations that I'm very uncomfortable in and look like I'm comfortable because when you own a business and you deal with women respectfully, (laughs) I love, I love you guys. But when you deal with women on a day to day, you can't help but feel a certain way about yourself. Sometimes Mm -hmm. that, that yearning of that personal development is a need now, not just because you want it, because you need it, because you need it to just be okay mentally. Yeah. You know, you start being around so many women that are either in the entertainment industry, stay at home, mom industry, Mm -hmm. you know, uh, you know, boss bay industry, whatever you're always going to compare. Especially in a service, you're going to look at yourself like, oh my gosh, she's telling you so much about her life. And you have to just be like, yes, girl. Mm-hmm. <laughs> All the time. 
when yes. so, where, where it may be triggering. Even or where it could be you feel like, damn, I ain't, well, done I ain't there yet. Or why yeah. not me? Or and it's again that pick me thing. It's more so like I'm not in that space. Mm-hmm. I can't meet men normally. Right? Because I work with women every day. I don't go to the office and meet the man that's bringing you coffee. <laughs> yeah. I don't have that. Yeah. So when women like, yeah, girl, I went out after lunch for happy hour. Oh, we, we ain't got happy hour in the mail. <laughs> <laughs> Barely have a happy. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, we have hours. But I don't know. Like, so it just depends. Like, I really think when it comes to being a service industry, you have to be okay with yourself. That's one. Mm-hmm. Because you can't keep giving and giving and giving and emptying your cup when your cup is empty. Yeah. Because that is part of our job is to give, right? Yeah, serving. And you're serving. You're serving. We're in a service industry. I am to mm-hmm. serve you. I am going to give you yeah. and tend to your needs. So when I'm not able to do that, it's because I'm empty. Mm-hmm. Service providers don't take that break, mm-hmm. right? And then another thing when it comes to dealing with women, respectfully, you know, we do that whole comparing thing naturally. But then also being able to be okay in that space. Even when I'm not okay. Mm-hmm. You might say your boyfriend just broke up with you. And girl, you're going through, you late. Oh my God, I can't sleep. I haven't slept. I haven't ate. Girl, me too. But I can't tell you that. I mean, I can to some people, but I can't to most, right? Mm-hmm. Because I have to be okay for you. Mm-hmm. But there's not a lot of people that are okay for me, right? Mm-hmm. So I have to be a chameleon in all aspects of emotions. And adjust. And adjust. Yeah. So my ability to adjust whether I'm around the white, the Asian, the black, the tall, the short, the wide, I'm able to fit and I'm able to make sure that I'm not overstepping boundaries and I'm not under delivering my own boundaries because mm-hmm. of the fact that I need to be okay at the mm-hmm. end of the day. Yeah. So that's something that I could say I really love about myself is being just a chameleon and like in my situations that I deal with every day. I like that. This was such an interesting conversation for me because we talked, we listen, we ran the gamut. Okay? <laughs> we got ran the gamut. <laughs> We were in the gamut. It's because we be here. We we, we, we were in the gamut. So we want to know, how can we stay connected? Where can we stay connected with you? We want to know all the things. Where are you on social media media platforms? Um, My social media platform, on my personal page, is iHeartDMarie, I-H-E-A-R-T-D-M-A-R-E. And my business page is Nail God Studios. You can find me there. You can also email me if you have interest in any classes or anything like that at nailgodstudios at gmail.com and I mean you can always google me and find me on everywhere else too okay so. google her <laughs> you heard that that's a little slide in a little slide in a little shade a little... listen no that's not shade that's a little, that's a little brilliant a little brilliant a little right. brilliant Danny where can we stay connected with you um you can stay connected with me at Miss Danny Foster on Instagram wait Oh. You're not. It ain't not that no more. Not it's not, not that anymore. That's what I always said. I was like, hold on. I'm like saying, I'm like, hold on, wait. That's not it's not that. that. It's a chicken, chicken remix. Actually, <laughs> ready back. Chicken, chicken, chicken. You can find me at the Danny Bordeaux, B O U R D E A U, um, on Instagram, Danny Bordeaux on um, Facebook. You can still go to dannyfostercoaching.com to book any sessions with me. I did just reopen my books, and I'm going to be making some changes since my last change. But um, that's where you can stay connected with me, and I really want this season for our audience to be more connected with us. So we have a lot of events coming up for you guys where you can spend the day with us. You can interact with us. We are getting down and dirty with you guys this season. So let's get connected. Yes, Yes, in in real life. And what about you? Where can we stay connected with you? So you can stay connected with me all over Beyonce's internet at Alicia Reese, A-L-E-C-H-I-A. Last name Reese, R-E-E-S-E. And remember that whole spend the day with us, have some fun with us? Yes, we are taking it in real life. You can actually go to Triggered AF Events to find out about the events that we have that are coming up that you can hang with us. You already know we're going to trigger you, but we're going to all be triggered in order to grow. And we're going to definitely have some good-ass fun to do so. Uh And you can go to TriggeredAFpodcast.com to sign up for our newsletter to watch our episodes to be a part of our community on instagram is triggered afpc so you can see all the things you can listen to this podcast everywhere podcasts are casted you can go on youtube to watch the podcast i mean we are just doing 
all the things everywhere for season five. So we are so excited for you guys to come along with us. Thank you so much, Dee Marie, for being so open and so honest. Again, we knew this conversation would be a little controversial, but that's where we want to go. We want to go a little deeper. We've dealt with a lot of triggers. So we're going to go a little deeper so that we can really just like excavate. Is that word? Excavate. It takes stuff out. Yeah. Yeah. Ex- yep. Excavate. Yeah. And so that we can really and truly excavate. heal because like right. colorism um, is a real thing. Yeah. The, the issues between black women and Latinx women, that's a real thing that yeah. nobody is talking about in depth. So I just feel so grateful that you were able to come and talk about this. And I hope this helps people to heal any traumas they have around this. Share with your mama. Share with your yes. sister. Share with your kids. No, no, no. Share with your kids. Share with your cousin, your next door neighbor. Everybody (laughs) that you think this might be helpful for, please share with them. And we'll see you guys next time. Bye. Bye.